today. We're going to rank every Monday night football game. This is it's also its own separate video. Um, <sighs> that what? What do you? What do you? What it's going to be a long one. It's going to be a long <laughs> one. I want to get this out a little bit quicker than we did our Sunday night one. So, um, just a quick little uh, synopsis or analysis for each one, guys. Uh, we do have a couple of games to talk about here. I believe it's what sixteen or seventeen. 17 games to talk about. So we'll do this quickly. We'll go myself, then Kev, then Mitch. And then Ooh, we'll main going. event. All right. Main event. Go ahead, boys. All right. So we'll start from worst and go to the best. My worst game for Monday Night Football in 2019 is the Miami Dolphins versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Two reasons. One, the Miami Dolphins, I think, are the worst, the least talented team in football. And second, you guys remember in like 2007 when this game happened and it was 3 nothing. It was the worst game ever made. I know that's way down the line, but that is team history, and that's Monday Night Football history, baby. Um, I also just don't think these teams really clash in a good matchup, and I think it's going to be pretty damn boring. And plus it could be a blowout. So Dolphins Steelers, worst game in Monday Night Football 2019. Kev, what do you have at number 17, your worst Monday Night Football game of the year? Uh, I would – Agree with you. Actually, there was a couple of options, but I'm going to go with Dolphin Steelers. All right. Any particular reason you just don't like? Uh, I just don't think the Dolphins are going to be very good this year. So um, I, I don't know what we're going to be expecting from the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. So that's why. But there right. are a couple of other candidates there. Absolutely. There are a couple of really bad games. Just want to point this out. Sunday Night Football had a lot of really great games. And this year, like Monday Night Football's first half, like probably 9 to 17, or not very good. Mitch, what do you have as your worst game of 2019 Monday Night Football? Week 8, Dolphins at Steelers. There we go. Full full agreement. Anything to add? What you guys said. All right, that's fair. I mean, it's, it's my birthday, too. That's like, oh, boo. Boo. Boo that game. Get that game out of here. We'll, ch- we'll change it up, buddy. We'll find a Week 8 game for you. All right. Number 16 for me, the second worst game on the schedule, Bengals versus Steelers at number 16. Uh, sometimes these happen where you just get back-to-back teams, but it's not really because of the Steelers. It's because I'm really low on the Bengals. I know sometimes this rivalry game goes into, oh, here's the slugfest, and who's going to you know, who's gonna fight in that really crazy game a couple years ago. Uh, well, now Burfitt is gone. He does not play for the Bengals, so the biggest antagonizer of the whole thing is not going to be there, and – I just don't like the Bengals. They're not entertaining. There's one of those teams that I just can't get into. So, number 16, Bengals and Steelers. Kev, number 16. I have week one, matchup number two, the Broncos and the Raiders. I think that that will be a – I think it has the potential to be – it could be good, but these I don't think that these two teams are going to be very good, and I don't think that this is going to be an enjoyable football game. So, I have that one as my second worst all right, fair enough, fair enough. I have the week 14 New York Giants at Philadelphia Eagles. I think the Giants will be absolutely horrendous by this point, meaning that this is in Philadelphia, probably be like 30 to 6, something like that. So. Oh, sheesh. Uh, okay, so we all went a little bit different at number 16. But for number 15, you'll be hearing the exact same game as Mitch. So my number 15 is the Giants versus the Eagles. Uh, I do not like this game. The only reason there's anything good on the line is because it's a divisional matchup. Maybe they can create something there. Um, but in Philadelphia, um, remember the Thursday night game? That sucked. It's kind of like what I think is going to be here. So, And I don't think Giants are going to be very good. Maybe Saquon performance, if he goes off, could be a better game. But otherwise, no. Kev, number 15. Yeah, I'm going to go with yours there, uh, the Week 14 Giants-Eagles. Um uh, I mean, I think the, the for the Eagles part, I think they'll be playing in a playoff spot, but uh, we could be watching the Daniel Jones era, maybe. Mm-hmm. That could be the only interesting Ooh, thing. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Match number 15? Week three, Bears at Redskins. Mm. I, I just don't see any attractive part of this. I mean, it's probably going to be a defensive football game, very low scoring. It's still early in the season, so there's still some hype for it, but I don't expect the Redskins – To be bad, but not good enough to be exciting while the Bears are kind of finding their way throughout the season. What week is that again? Week three. Okay. Maybe some hype for Haskins if he starts the season, you know. Yeah. Teams aren't going to be off to that bad of a start. Even You can only go 0-2 going into week Mm -hmm. three. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, That game was coming up on my list. But at number 14, might be surprising. 
Vikings versus Seahawks at number 14. Whoa! Yeah, number 14. First of all, they played last year. It was a yeah, terrible was watch. It was a bad, bad game. You guys live-streamed it, so that, yes. that was nice. Very fun. There's some good commentary there. I enjoyed that, but uh, otherwise, I did not enjoy that game. Russell Wilson's interception was one of the five worst interceptions I've seen in this decade. Um, not really, but well, it kind of was his fault. But anyways, um, I just don't think these two t- teams clash in great styles. They've always had really low-scoring affairs for the most part or kind of blowout situations, and uh, I just don't think it makes for great television or great football. I just don't think these teams clash that well. So that's my number 14. Kev. Uh, I have the week four matchup, Bears-Washington. Uh, I just uh, – the only thing that's potentially exciting to me is Dwayne Haskins, but this is this will be a low-scoring game. I'm not expecting the Bears to be super awesome offensively this year either, so I don't I think that's another part of it. All right. That's fair. That is fair. Number 14, Mitch. Week four, Bengals at Steelers. I think that's week four. I know Kev all said that last matchup was week four. I think this is week four. Could be week no, three. No, your, yours is week five. Week five. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I have them messed no, up. No, wait. No, sorry. You're right. No. Week three is Bears, Bears, Redskins. Okay. Week four, Bengals, Steelers. Sorry. Anyways, Bengals, I don't think will be that great, but overall, there's still a rivalry here. So that's why I moved it a little bit higher than a couple of you other guys. Um, I just think there's still like the, the AFC North battle that there, it's going to be a physical game at the very least. There's new coaching, though. There's no Vontez Berfic, so it kind of takes away the fire. At least Andy Dalton should still be healthy in this game, so that's positive. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe there's something there. Um, okay, I, I enjoy that. Uh, number 13, Bears and Redskins. You guys have mentioned this before. I'm um, not a big fan of this matchup. I, I don't think these clash of styles are going to work very well for primetime television. Um, and the really only intrigue is for me to see Dwayne Haskins in a primetime performance if he's going to be there week three. If not, it's going to be even worse. So, uh, yeah, that's number 13 for me. Kev, 13. 13 is the October 21st game between the New England Patriots and the New York Jets. I understand that it is a rivalry wow. game, but mm. the Jets are not going to be a good football team, and the Mine's Patriots way don't. <laughs> Mine's uh, higher, too. Mine is very uh, good. Uh, but, but this will also be the Patriots get it going in the second half. So I just don't think that this is going to be a great football game. So I have that one uh, fifth on my list. Fifth wow. worst on my list. That is that is interesting. I, I've got that higher than Mitch that he's got it higher. All right, 13, Mitch. The Cowboys at the Giants, week number nine. Okay. Giants suck. Cowboys should be good. And it's week number nine, so we're, we're not quite in Daniel Jones territory. We're like, okay, Eli's last couple games here. So, yeah. That's that's fair. I've only got a couple of high spots higher for obvious reasons. Number 12, Broncos Raiders. Um, I'm a little higher than Kev is, and apparently Mitch might be at the same or even higher. Um, I, I have this list, or I have this here because we get to see Antonio Brown play. Um, we get to see this new Raiders system with uh, all this, you know, all this hype around them. Can they do something with all the free agents? Um, and, you know, just a little bit better than their Christmas Eve matchup that meant absolutely nothing. So if that's a positive, there's a positive. So, yeah, that's at my number 12 spot. Kev, what you got at number 12? Uh, I think that this, you know, this will probably be a bit more of an intense game. I think Zach Taylor is going to do, try to do some innovative things and be bold, but ultimately the Pittsburgh Steelers will be blowing out the Bengals, I think on September 30th, but I have that as my number 12. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Not a, not a very high game for all of us. Uh, Mitch, what do you have at number 12? My number 12 is week number one Broncos at Raiders. Antonio Brown, I think, versus Chris Harris, that'll be fun. Uh, John Gruden, week number one, it's gonna be hyped up like crazy. It, it's just gonna be fun. It's in Oakland. I th- I think this is like a very underrated game because it's still week one. We don't know how good any team is gonna be in the league. Mm-hmm. So with all the hype surrounding the Raiders and all the new faces on the Broncos, I think it makes for an underrated game. Absolutely. All right, number eleven. Seahawks versus the 49ers here. Um, I am still very suspicious of what the Seahawks are going to do. Um, And again, I just don't know if this game is going to play out well. I think it could be an interesting matchup again because of the division that they're in. I think 
uh, three of those four teams have at least a little bit of interest in winning that division. I don't know about the Cardinals. But I, I think that these two could provide a good matchup. I just want to see it. And again, Jimmy G not playing last year. We need to see what he does this year. I haven't seen that yet. So it's going to be a little bit lower on the list. So number 11, Seahawks at 49ers. Kev, number 11. I got the Cowboys and the Giants. Uh, Cowboys are not always the best on the road. The Giants are not going to be a fun team to watch. So I have that as number 11. Absolutely fair critiques on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> at number 11, I have week number 12, Ravens at Rams. Not super high on the Ravens. Oh. Wow. I'm not super high on the Ravens. I don't really think the – the Rams are that fun this year, to be honest. I just I've seen that offense do their thing, and I've seen them get shut down as well. Uh, nothing really new with the Rams. Like they're basically the same team, and the Ra- like they've lost a couple of pieces, if anything. Ravens, I think. Like I don't know, it's just not exciting. I I don't see the f- the excitement in this matchup. Like, can you tell me the excitement? I guess we'll wait for your guys you guys to go. I just. I don't see it. It's gonna be tough, man. I, I, I like it a little bit more. I, I have it a couple. It's not a rivalry either. So no, it, yeah, it's definitely not a rivalry. Um, well, I, I just have it. A, well, I was just kind of shocked that it was here, at number eleven. Okay. Fair I think enough. there's actually some good games on Monday night, from what I see. I think once, I think uh, in a couple of spots, like probably eighth, is where we're gonna start to see some really good games. But at number ten, I have Cowboys versus Giants. The only reason it was probably higher than both of these guys is because I'm a Cowboys fan. Uh, and I like seeing us beat the Giants twice a year. So, yeah, number 10 for me. Um, Kev, what do you have here at number 10? Uh, I have um, – I'm going to go uh, with – I'm going to ultimately go with the Browns and the Jets week two because <clears throat> I just don't think the Jets are going to be a good football team. I think people are going to be interested in the Browns. Um, and this might be a blowout game for the Browns, so this may be an opportunity for them, for them to make a statement. But it's not like it's not on the like. Just considering other the other games in there, it's not on the top, top of the list. This is going to be the opportunity to everyone to see what how good the Cleveland Browns if the Cleveland Browns can step up on prime time. This will be the big question. So, all right, all right, uh, Mitch, what do you got at number ten? At number ten. I have the Vikings at the Seahawks, week number 13. There it is. Like you said, it was kind of boring last year. It's it's basically the same game. I think it's going to be defensive again. Uh, I think both offenses will be struggling a little bit. Both of these teams could be in playoff contention, so that's somewhat interesting. But to me, overall, I just don't see the rivalry. I don't see the excitement. I don't see the big plays. I just see it as a kind of grinded-out football game. Fair enough, fair enough. At number nine for me, I have the Patriots versus the Jets. I think this will be an interesting football game, to say the least. Um, For some reason, when we get Monday Night Football games, I feel like the Patriots just don't have the best matchups. You know what I mean? Like, I want more. Yeah, they never do. Like, the Bills last year, that was terrible. But the – I'm sorry, that was 2018 Bills. They're better this year. I'm very – I'm excited for the Bills. But – um, yeah, the Jets are one of those teams that I think can do well. It's just a very, you know, put it together situation. Um, I think their new agent, you know, free agents are going to create for a little bit of excitement. But ultimately, uh, unless if you're in Miami, I think Brady will get the job done on the road. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with Patriots and Jets here at number nine. Kev, your number nine, which is a white background at this moment. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not used to using the iPhone here. I've got the Lions and the Packers uh, Canadian Thanksgiving night as my number nine. Uh, as I said, I'm not sure where the Lions are at, um, so I'm kind of in- a little bit intrigued by that. But I'm also not really sure where I'm at with the Packers either. Uh, I know that we have Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford should make it interesting, but if I'm not sure if these are two good teams or if these are two good quarterbacks. But I have it as number nine. All right, fair enough, and we will talk. I'll talk about that. I think this is where we're starting to get to our point where we can like these games. Like, I think these are going to be ex- a little bit exciting games. Uh, Mitch, at number nine, what do you have? Week six, Lions at Packers. And this was a really underrated game last year. The Lions took it to the Packers uh, last year, so this is going to be a good game. I think the Lions will be better than people expect, especially early in the season. I think the Packers are going to be really good. It's in Lambeau. 
Aaron Rodgers versus Matt Stafford. There's potential for a lot of big plays in this game and a new coaching matchup with Patricia versus uh, LaFleur. So that's interesting. Oh, nice. Nice. By the way, I do want to point this out. This is completely irrelevant, but it's kind of to your point here. Uh, I realized that the last three uh, NFC coaches uh, in the Super Bowl have all been second year coaches. And there's only three in the NFC. Who? Uh, Matt Patricia, um, Matt Nagy, and um, Pat Shermer. Okay. The Giants ain't making it. So <laughs> the Bears and the Lions. You never know. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I found that. Wait, really- the last three. So McVay. Yeah. McVay. Um, Dan. It was uh, the Falcons. I um, can't think of his name. Oh, was- Dan, Quinn. Dan Quinn. And then. Um, Peterson. Peterson. Yeah. yeah. So That's true. It's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm just saying that's more to the Lions point than anything else. But. Okay, at number nine, or uh, excuse me, at number eight, is my is the game you guys been talking about, Lions and Packers. Um, under, underrated game last year, as Mitch said. And, you know, these teams have a little bit of intrigue, but, like, in the question marks, and that's why I think this is going to be a good game. Plus, it's a division matchup. Um, I know it's in Lambeau, and the Lions almost never win in Lambeau, but I still think that this could be a competitive uh, matchup to see, you know, maybe this could take something in the NFC North in terms of playoffs or – you know, are these two teams going to have a good back and forth matchup? I think it'll be a good game. Um, and the Packers matchup against the 49ers was surprisingly really good last year, even though it, it shouldn't have been. They should have won a lot easier. But I think they did well last year. I think they'll do good this year. Kev, your number eight selection. Uh, it, my number eight selection is a game on October 7th, and it's the Cleveland Browns versus the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I think – uh, mm-hmm. This will be a very high-scoring game, mm-hmm. and uh, um, I think that there's going to be a lot of interest in there. And I think this is an opportunity for both organizations to generate more fans. Um, so, and I think that both teams have the potential to get off to a to a good start. Anyway, so um, it'll be a key game, I think, early season. You are not in, invested in the Browns right now. I can, I just number eight. That's interesting. You're not on the train. That's what I'm saying. Mitch, number eight. Week 16 Packers Vikings. Oh. I think this game could be for a playoff spot. But I also feel like I've seen this game a lot. So that's what it kind of takes away from the flair of it. Um, Yeah. But Cousins cousins on prime time in Minnesota, a lot of pressure on him here if they're in a playoff position. Huge. Week number 16. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a little uh, one or two spots higher than mine, or lower than mine, I should say. But we'll talk about that in a second. At number seven, I have Ravens versus Rams. Um, I am interested to see what the Ravens can do this year. Like, I don't really know what to think about it. I did just put Lamar Jackson in the below average category, but he still is an interesting talent that we're going to see here on prime time. Can they step up? defense you know they lost a lot of key players but did add a couple Earl Thomas is a big example so are they going to be this team that we can expect and the Rams um you know a little bit of a little bit of skepticism their way as well but I think it's an interesting clash of two styles is why I have it here at number seven more than anything else so yeah Ravens Rams at number seven okay what do you got well, I think that one of the things that is, is going to happen here now is there's going to be a couple of games that I'm just going to personally more enjoy more because of the teams sure. involved. Yeah. Uh, so, um, But I have number seven, Texans Saints, the first game of the year, uh, which I think both of you will have a little bit higher. Uh, but I, do, I also think actually you look at the top half of Monday Night Football, it's actually, you know, at first glance, I didn't like it, but at second glance, there's some, there's some really potentially interesting games here. And this Texan Saints game has a potential to be a barn burner shootout uh, for both sides. I think the Texans will come in having a lot to prove. So will the Saints, uh, which will, I think will make it a good game. And you guys will probably have it higher because um, you're not interested in certain Seahawks games. And I have some Seahawks games that I'm more interested in. So that's why, for my personal preference, I have Texan Saints. But I will understand from a non-objective point of view why you will have that higher. Hey, this is why we think they're all personal. So I, 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 <laughs> I understand. Uh, all right, number seven. Uh, what you got? Week number 10. 
Hawks at Niners. I think this is going to be a great game, potentially. I think it potentially could be high scoring. Uh, weather's going to be very nice in San Francisco. <clears throat> Russell Wilson versus Jimmy G, hopefully, is on the field. Hopefully. Uh, two you know, young coach versus old coach. Uh, I think there's going to be kind of that chip on the shoulder from the Seahawks perspective, kind of people counting them out um, for potentially a down year in week 10 where they're kind of, they'll probably be sitting at like a decent position where they could make the playoffs. They could not while the 49ers, I feel like could be in a potentially pretty good spot at this point in the season where the Seahawks might be like, we need to come in here and show them who's boss. So I think that'll be a good game. Week number 10. All right. I can see the entry. I definitely, I definitely can see it at number six. I got the Packers and the Vikings week 16. Um, I put this higher, a couple of spots higher because of the fact that this has in playoff implications. Um, these two teams usually put on good performances. If you guys remember week two last year, the 29-29 overtime scandal, if you will, the tie. Um, I thought that was a very entertaining game, one of the best games of the year. And, you know, their Sunday night football game, their rematch was not very good. It wasn't, it wasn't very exciting. But if we get that week two matchup in a big spot like this, I think it could be uh, a good amount of fun. So that's why I got to hear number six. Kev, what do you got? Uh, I've got the week, uh, the week, uh, the Seahawks and the 49ers here. I, uh, I just don't have the 49ers as high up as Mitch does. Um, that's part of the reason here. And I think that there's a game, a little, there's a couple of games a little bit more later on in the year that I think are going to be more important. Um, that's partially why, but I do think it's, it's, it's it is going to be a good game. Like the dancing there. Number six. <laughs> week two. Sam Darnold is going to host Baker Mayfield. That's it. That's it. That's the explanation. All right. Well, we'll give you a little more explanation because we're in the top five and at number five, I've got the Browns versus Jets as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Two incredible young teams. Um, Baker Mayfield. Let's see him in the spotlight, baby. I'm really excited to see that so early in the season as well. Sam Darnold. Can he step it up? Because we had, there's a lot of critics out there. Kev, there's a lot of critics out there that are <laughs> wanting to see what he can do on a big spotlight. And I think this trash, be, trash. Not kidding. I, I think he, uh, you know, I put him in the bowl average category. So, you know, maybe I want, I want to see a little bit more. I want to see what he can do. And I think both of these teams, you know, they gave us a pretty interesting Thursday night battle in week three last year. And those teams were significantly worse, I think, than what we got to get here. So that's a number five. Kev, what do you got at the start of your top five? Started by not top five. I think the way that things are going to go here is um, this is going to be a true battle for a final playoff spot. And it is the December 23rd game between the Packers and the Vikings. Um, I think you're right. I agree, Mitch. It's a game that we've seen a lot. Uh, but I do think because this is the end of the year and because I do think that the Packers and Vikings are going to be battling for a playoff spot, I think that that, that is why I have it a little bit higher up. Because I do think it's going to be more of a significant matchup. Fair. I try and take that a little bit away. I don't necessarily put everything on like when it is in the season because Aaron Rodgers could be hurt again. So you never know. That's true, but I'm just I'm going with that's I'm going with what I'm kind of like the the significance of it. Okay, at number five, I have my Patriots at the New York Jets because yeah. this is the best AFC East rivalry when it is going and when it is strong. I feel like week number seven, I think the Jets will be relevant enough for people to be excited about this game. It's in New York. I think this is a game where potentially the Patriots could lose. They do typically lose one divisional game a year, and it is in New York. It is on Monday night. That's hard to that's hard to go into somewhere on Monday night and win, uh, especially against a team that's going to be absolutely jacked up. Adam Gase has been hyping this game up. Basically, he's been saying since day one, first day he was hired, we need to beat the Patriots. It's so, the Fisher method. But yeah, he Rex it. Ryan basically 2.0. So he's just bringing yep. it in here. Um a lot of, lot of talent the Jets have now, so they're a little bit more like interesting and compelling from Le'Veon Bell if he's not traded to C.J. Mosley, Jamal Adams, all those guys, and of course Sam Darnold, and of course the Patriots. So that's why it's at number five. At number four for me is the Browns versus the 49ers. I think this could be very high scoring. Uh, I think, again, two young quarterbacks, Jimmy G, 
let's hope he's healthy, can play this game. And I am sorry. I'm sorry we're ragging on him too much, but that's just the nature of the beast when you have that situation. But, you know, two teams that I'm liking going into the season, the Browns are very high on the 49ers, I think have a good chance to make the playoffs. So um, these two teams clashing on Monday Night Football, I mean, it's going to be good entertainment. When you get down to these kind of last games, it's like, all right, are we going to get a back and forth matchup? I don't want any blowouts in my top five area. And I don't think this is going to be one of them. So, uh, yeah, Browns for Niners at number four. Okay, what do you got at number four? See, I, I don't mind low-scoring games. I, 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 I quite enjoy them. Um, <laughs> and I, I like the whole – and sometimes I like when there's a physical matchup facing a, a pure offensive team. And that's why I have the Ravens and the Rams a little bit higher than you guys. Yeah, I don't um, think the Ravens are going to be good, so that's just why I don't have it high. <laughs> I, I'm I'm higher on the Ravens than you are right now, um, and I think that this is one of those games that if the Rams are going to win the NFC West, and if they're going to be what they think they are, they got to prove it against a very tough physical team. So I'm interested. Maybe there's a part of me interested in that because of the jersey I support as yes. well. I think that has a lot to do with that too, um, and I think Earl Thomas in on Baltimore I'm I'm interested to see what he does with the Rams so uh, I have that a little bit higher on at number four I have week number one Houston Texans at New Orleans Saints I think this can be shoot out it's in New Orleans great place to play week number one hype for Monday Night Football it's a huge game Deshaun Watson versus Drew Brees it's just exciting and high scoring and, and a great place to play and two teams coming into this season with expectations. Fair enough, which is why at my number three, I have the Texans and the Saints. You're starting off week one. You want to have an exciting back and forth matchup. I think this is the one you brought up uh, that this is in the Saints home. This is going to be a definitely uh, a, you know a hot crowd uh, for this game. So I definitely want to see that to start. And uh, I think this is going to be a good quarterback battle. I know we have our questions about whether Drew Brees can still throw the deep ball or anything like that. But in week one, you know, let's see what he can do out there. So Texans Saints at number three for me. Okay, what do you got at number three? Uh, I've got number three. Uh, I've got the the one that you guys did not like. And I, I, I will admit it was not a great game, but I the Vikings and the Seahawks, Wow, uh, I, I think, will be – um, that game might be a battle for who can finish first in their division uh, because you've got the Ravens and the Rams. The Vi- I think we both I, – I have the Vikings and the Seahawks as, as in the number two, so they'll at least be competing for wild card. I think it'll have playoff implications. Uh, as I said, I don't mind the smash mouth football part of this, so I'm looking forward to that. So, But I have that at number three. <coughs> okay. All right. Very, very Seahawks pick. I can definitely – See that one there. It just doesn't interest me. Number three, Mitch, what do you got? Week number five, the Cleveland Browns head to San Francisco for the future of respective conferences game. Respective conference. The 2023 Super Bowl preview. Yes. Yes. There you go. 2019 Super Bowl. Oh, that's not going to come on too far. (laughs) Now. It looks like we all have the same number one and number two, which yeah. is a good positive. I think that is nice. Let's I'm interested see to see which one's number one or which one's number yeah. two. Let's see what let's see where we go. So at number two for me is the Colts and the Saints. I believe this is week I don't know which week. Week it is. fifteen. Is okay, week fifteen. So it's an end of the year. Could have some playoff implications. First off, I mean a Super Bowl rematch. I know it's a decade before, but that's just a nice. Oh, little come little. on, it's not. <laughs> Second, it can prove the Mitch factor of who's the better quarterback, Breeze or Luck. But third, the most important reason for me is that these are two really good teams. The Colts are one of the teams that are rising up in the AFC. Uh, they got a lot of potential. Andrew Luck had a fantastic year, and I think he's going to have another really solid year uh, here in 2019. So then you go up against the, the Saints. What they were able to do last year, are they going to be uh, as high scoring? I don't think so, but I still think this will be a big shootout Um between two really good teams that have some good leadership on them and some great young talent as well. I think the Colts defense is really sneaky this year. So we'll see how that goes, but I really like this matchup, especially towards the end of the year. You need a little bit more hype uh, as those last couple of weeks go in. So Texan or excuse me, Saints and Colts at number two. What do you got, Kev? Is it this? One I, 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 I'm also going with the Colts and Saints here. I, I think you know, this is going to be a fun game to Super Bowl contenders uh, to, 
well, t- two potential Super Bowl contenders, uh, two great quarterbacks in New Orleans. Um, it's just going to be loud and crazy and a lot of fun. Ditto. Same thing? Yes. <laughs> Ditto. Ditto. All right, so the same points there. So at number one, let's all talk about this at the same time. The Chiefs and the Chargers here at number one. In Kevl's favorite stadium. The StubHub Arena. Kev, do you know the number off chance, or can you search that up for me? Oh, yeah, well, we'll find, yeah, we gotta find, it's actually not the StubHub Arena anymore, by the way. Just an up, update on that. But what? Actually, it's, yeah, oh, it's, but tick, yeah. Um, this like it is now called the Dignity Health Sports Park. That might be so, even worse. That's probably yeah, yeah. That's, that's worse. Yeah, uh, but same address. Um, but really, like just look back at what happened in that Thursday night football game in Kansas City between Rivers and Mahomes. Um, the two point convert at the end. Uh, these are two teams that I think both all three of us have in the top two in the in the AFC West. These are two teams that I. Um, we were considering for Super Bowl last year, uh, two fun quarterbacks. It's it's really hard to say that this is not the best Monday Night Football matchup. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it will be high scoring. And I think it's why a lot of people watch football. So yeah. that's yeah. kind of where I'm coming from. I do want to point out that I, I just realized, I just searched this up now. This is the Mexico game. This is the Mexico City game. So we will not have to deal with whatever freaking well it's remember remember though they that the Kansas I know, City Rams I know, game but, was but they, also well, supposed to be in Mexico City and it did not well, turn out that way let's hope that so, they, they announced it again that they actually fixed it like I'm hoping it since they announced it well you know like they gave enough trust let's hope for that um but definitely agree uh their Thursday night game was a classic uh, it was a back and forth matchup. Chargers came back with a great comeback, and then the Chiefs decided not to play defense at two point conversion. It had everything you would possibly want, uh, and I think this game is the exact same role this time around. Um, big implications in their own division, two Super Bowl contenders, if you will, and uh, you know, again, really good teams with really great players. I mean, there's not much more I could say. There's just a lot of fun action in a great divisional matchup, Mitch. And it board. started last year. I don't think at the beginning of last year we'd have this number one, but really this rivalry has started from the last the two games last year. The first game of the season last year, and then the, the later one, which was epic on Thursday night, I believe. So mm-hmm. it just builds up the absolute hype for this game. There you go. That is our rankings of every Monday night football game. You guys are watching the solo. If you're watching the solo vid, Smash the like.